So we've reached the point where it's time to learn about the math of gas laws. So going back to the video that I made earlier, we know that if we consider these three variables, temperature, volume, and pressure, I'll leave out the, this section will leave out um, the number of molecules variable for the time being. So temperature, volume, and pressure, you might be able to see that color better. Uh, we know that if temperature goes up, volume goes up, when pressure is constant. We know that if pressure goes up, volume goes down if temperature is constant. We know that if temperature goes up, pressure goes up if volume is constant. So those are our relationships as demonstrated in the videos that I made earlier this week. Uh, so now how do we deal with problems? So I'm going to flip over to a gas law question. Um, and the gas law questions look like this. Um, you have a th let's just look at number three. You've got a 375 milliliter sample of nitrogen and has a pressure of 1.2 atmospheres. So we set up a little table. Pressure, temperature, volume. All right, we go back and look at the question. 375 milliliters. You're going to need to know that milliliters measure volume. So that would be 375 milliliters. Then the pressure was constant. No pressure wasn't. It was 1.2 atmospheres. All right, and we know that the volume is going down to 125, but the temperature is constant. So go back and mark the temperature as being constant. Doesn't change. And uh, the volume goes to 125. Uh, pressure was 1.2. Okay, so that would be uh, P1, initial sets of conditions, and final sets of conditions, or initial and final. You can do it that way, too. All right, so condition one, condition two. So as the volume is going from 375 to 125, that means the volume is going down. How should the pressure change? Volume is going down, the pressure should go up. See this relationship, volume down, pressure up. So, we're going to take our pressure, 1.2 atmospheres. When I went through the units of pressure, remember atmospheres is one of the units. And we're going to multiply that by a ratio of these two numbers that would make our desired change occur. So, the desired change was, would be, once again, volume is going down, so pressure should be going up. So I need to make this 1.2 get bigger. To get it bigger, would I multiply by 375 over 125, or would I multiply by 125 over 375? So in other words, I've got two possible ratios, 125 over 375, or I've got 375 over 125. So which one of those two would make this number get bigger? It would be the one with the bigger number on top. So you'd have 375 over 125. And the units on those both were milliliters, which would then cancel above each other. So you'd have 1.2 1 1 times 375. Let me just do this real quick. I'll sh show you what it looks like. So 1.2 times 375 equals, and then divide by 125 equals 3.6. So our final answer would be 3.6 atmospheres. Then you go back uh, to your there, this the quiz and 3.6 we said, and if you come down to the bottom, you can check it. Remember, on these kinds of quizzes, if the box goes away, it's correct, and you notice how the box is gone. So that was the correct answer. All right, I'm going to show you another one, then develop a formula. So let's take a look at.
Okay, so the one I'm looking for here is not here. Ah, uh, there we go. This is one I'm looking for, number 14. So we'll take a look at 14. So I'm going to make a little chart again. And I'm going, I want you to make a little chart on a piece of paper that looks like, that looks like this. So this time we'll set the chart up a little differently. V1, V2, P1, P2, T1, T2. Okay, so write that chart down on your piece of paper that you're using as you follow along. I'm going to put the numbers in, so I'm going to go back over to the quiz, put the numbers in. And then I want you to check, to, you put the numbers in also and see if you agree with my numbers. So V1, I think, is T1 is listed. All right, I have my numbers in. If you need more time, just pause the video. And those are the numbers that I put in. So now we're going to solve the problem and try and solve for P2. We don't know P2. So when you're doing a problem using uh, this logic method, you're going to write down the number that you're given, that you're the number for which you're only given one. In other words, the, the variable for which you only have one value. All right, and remember KPAs are a unit of pressure. You have to go back to the pressure video. If you need to review that, go back and review. So we've got 100 KPAs. We're gonna deal with volume first. So, and you don't have to deal with volume first, but I just am because this is first on my list. So the volume is going from 900 to 200. So the volume is decreasing. How would that what would pressure have to do to make the volume decrease? Well, let's look back up here, volume pressure. When volume goes down, pressure goes up. So I need this number to get bigger. So I would put the bigger of the two values on the top. So this ratio would make that number get bigger. We know it needs to get bigger because the volume is decreasing, so the pressure needs to go up. Now we're gonna deal with temperature. Now you may remember that I told you that temperature always has to be in what value? What unit? Has to be in Kelvin. Okay, so the way we convert to Kelvin, I'm going to actually do this. Uh, we have to add 273, and I told you that in the world temperature video. So we're going to take our 27. Oops, uh, 27. And we're going to add to that. Uh, 273. And for those of you who are thinking ahead, you probably know that's going to be 300. Okay, so that num that temperature that we have in Kelvin has to be uh, 300. All right, temperature two uh, will be a negative 73. See, so it's negative 73 plus 273. So. Uh, negative 73 plus 273 is 200. So this temperature is 200. So the temperature is going down. How should that affect the pressure? So we look back up here at the temperature pressure. If the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. Move that out of the way so you can see. If the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. So if the temperature goes down, the pressure would also go down because they are directly related. So this change would make this pressure gets smaller, so it'd have 200 over 300. Now we're ready to do the math. So this is kind of like the stoichiometry math. Uh, we know that we're going to multiply everything across the top and divide by everything across the bottom. So we have 100 across the top, 
multiplied by 900, multiplied by 200, then we're going to divide that number by 200, then divide again by 300. So our final answer is 300. So let's see if that is correct. We go back to our quiz. This is number 14. You put in 300. You check. And you go back up. And 300 was the correct answer. We know that because the box has gone away. All right, so that is uh, how you do gas problems using the logic method. What I'd like to do though is use this to show you a formula real quick. Um, I forgot to put the temperatures in. This was in Kelvin. So when we changed to Kelvin then I didn't actually put the units down. But all the units cancel. Liters cancel, Kelvins cancel, so you're just left with kilopascals, which is of course a unit of pressure. Alright, now here's a formula. You notice that the 100 kilopascals, that was P1. And the 900 liters, that was V1. And the 200 Kelvin, that was T2. T2. All right, the 200 liters was volume 2. The 300 Kelvin was temperature 1. And the answer was pressure 2. So now you can see that we have a, the makings of a formula. If I write it down, I'm just going to take the pink writing and put it in blue down here. So I'm going to have P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. Sometimes you'll see this formula written as the same thing would be P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. However, I think it's maybe easier to write the formula this way uh, because that keeps everything um, on the same level, if you will. Uh, down here, if you happen to have a T2 as an unknown, you have to multiply it by that first. It throws in another step. All right, so this is a formula which we call the combined gas law formula because it's combining all of the laws that we have except for the uh, variable with number of molecules. So using this formula, I'm going to want you to practice on the quiz that I used, and I'll put a link to that on the website.